Where do we want to be? We will cast up and bring our lures down the down the bank here, just like you did before, and then you got that bloody. And that's come on. There we go. So this is basically what he's talking about. Is yeah, that's a keeper. Definitely keeper. You'd be up almost around at thirty, I think. Fish. Yep. Already. Mount here today with Matthew. Hey everyone, how are you? We're somewhere on the pine. This is obvious. <laughs> <laughs> For those who know the pine, you'll know where this is, but. And those, I guess those guys that are on the, the pine Facebook page will know Matthew, he's always putting plenty of catches on there. Yeah, I love my broom and And flicking. And big fish and flicking light plastics for them. So, so what we're doing today. Flicking little light jig heads with um, two and a half inch slim swims or um, grubs, I think uh, Darren's good on. Yeah, got one of those little grubby. Let's grab mine. Darren's already dropped the flatty this morning, so they're around. Little grubby with uh, in motor oil. Had, I think, a flat edge latch onto it. Yep. Right on the drop off that's close to us at the moment. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. oh. Snag or yes? Snag. Oh, good bite. Good pants. <laughs> so, got a bite there. Wasn't too busy with the camera to realise. For this fishing, you're really looking for, you don't know, sometimes feel the bite, you're looking for your line just to, just to tick. Do something unnatural, unnormal, and it, when then it's just cruising down the river. So, let's see if we can. Alright, so you probably can't see it. Let it hit the bottom. So, line to the bottom, take up the slack, and then we're just watching for that line to just do a bit of a that, look like that. Get a fish. And you really want to set that hook, especially the flatties, because you don't want them to swallow it. It's running, running light, light leader. So you don't want them to swallow it, you want to... You really, well, you want, them, you want to try not to let them swallow it, because the further they get it down, the more likely you're going to chafe your leader and when mm. we're running light leader, you don't you don't want their mouth rubbing on the leader if you can help it. So as soon as you feel that bite, you want to give it a little bit of a set. Obviously not too much because you just pull it out. But just a bit of a set to get it in that lip. Mm. And then they'll, they'll sort of chew on that bit and then they won't run up your line. But if they do, you want to cut that off and you get it back and retie it. And you don't want any any issues with your line there. Because that's that's the part that's going to fail with a flatty. You get a good one on. Yep. Um, dropped some nice 80s recently because because they just inhale this sort of thing. But... You know, lately you've got to go the small profile bait fish to get the bite, so uh, it's been working. So, so uh, what leader you got on? I've got a six pound leader. Uh, I run ten pound line just because this, this combo does multiple things and ten pound line these days is so so thin it doesn't seem to affect the casting as much. Mm -hmm. um, but if the bite's really hard I'll drop down to four pound leader. But I don't sort of like doing that because then you do drop those better flatties if you get them. The six pound seems to be that sweet spot where you can still get some decent flatties in and um, still get the bite from the brim and a few other things that are really finicky so, so yeah we're just trying to fish the edges either drops off into like water's flowing through here so we're fishing the edges of that uh, and then we know there's a bit of a drop off here into a deeper spot um, so we're just trying to get the plastics to come over that all right see so how we go you don't have to set the hook like you see the states guys you know the americans are like whoa yeah i'm on you know what i mean you just got to give you just got to set it, so you just got to give that bit of a bit of a jig, you know what I mean? Just to give that hook a penetration. Mm. And we're using fine wire hooks, so they don't take much, you know what yeah. I mean? But I do like the idea of uh, lure fishing. Obviously, you don't need to try and get bait all the time. No. All you got to do is, I guess it's more challenging because of that. You got to work out what they want on the day. You do. So as you say, in this area, they like small profile. Yep, they definitely seem to like the small profile around here. And it has to be light because we're not talking I don't know. I mean, the over there is a lot shallow, but over here we've got a bit of a channel. Yeah, up there we were fishing in a, a foot. Um, over here we're probably at the moment in about two metres at low tide, maybe a metre and a half. It is quite a low tide today. Um, but, you know, high tide, this is, you know, three, three and a half metres in here. You know what I mean? In this hole we're in yeah. right now. It is quite a deep bank set so, up, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, 
this area is, you know, again, we're only, boat ramp's only 50 metres away. So, big thing, I, I'm, I come from kayak fishing, so a big thing for me is fishing close to where I launch, because I don't want to have to go kilometres and kilometres to find fish. The first thing I always do is try the boat ramp. Um, and I've put some great flatties around here, there's always room sitting around here, so you can't go too wrong around here. Yeah, you know, flathead move a lot. But a lot of people don't realise, I've actually been, especially if you've been on clear rivers up the coast, you'll see flat schools of flathead, like in four or five flathead, moving up the shallows up to new spots um, like after the tide changes and things like that. So they don't just turn around in the tide, they'll actually move to different spots. So you can't just predict that they're going to be there all the time, you know what I mean? So you do have to find them, track them down. Um, but if you know at low tide they like this sort of area or at high tide they like that sort of area, it becomes a lot easier, you know what I mean? Mm. And that's where fishing one spot over and over again can tell you and then you can apply it elsewhere. So. And we are just looking for the tick in our line. You don't necessarily feel the fish bite because we are using a lot of slack line. So the, the plastics fall quite naturally. That's the other thing is with the light jig heads make the plastics fall um, like, like a bait fish falling there, not like a stone to the bottom. So that's why you want to keep the light. You know, 116, 18 jig heads. Okay. I've got a stick fish. Well, actually, I've seen this morning. Well, that's something we've at least pulled out of the water. Yeah, yeah. Stick fish. Look at the brim. Good one, actually. As soon as you put that scent on, is that what happened? Yeah. The mullet. Yeah, as soon as I put that scent on, mate. How come I've had, I've had uh, scent on mine already, the mullet. That's well, I, yeah, that's a keeper. Definitely a keeper. Keep you up almost around at 30, I think. You might have to give him a measure. There you go. Yeah, got some measures on the Still side. Swim, swim. Give him a measure if he's 30, we'll put a tag in him. Put him on. Oh, fan it. Really? Yeah, fan it. Yeah, so 28. 28. Just get a good photo of him. Old steel, pal. Is that a bit of damage too? Yeah, it looks like he's been been bitten or something's had a go at him in the past. Yeah, so we, we tag him, I'll take pictures. Um, with the brim, we do the fork length and the tail length. Uh, and then we'll release him. Um, we let him know what the health is when we release them. And then um, all going well in a you know, couple of weeks, up to, you know, we've had some bass that have been caught 16 years later. So, um, this is the kit. Um, the tags are all individually numbered. So, where is the tag we'll be using today? So this guy will be... Y12203. So you just want to put him on the deck there. Just go in here, behind the... Under a scale, up near the... Put the thing, pull it out. Put, just like almost exactly like the tags you get in your shirts and that except for the a bit more robust on the thing over there I'll take a photo of that so I can upload it later try and do this quickly so we're getting getting back in the water and swimming in the water that's why we wet the brag mat to keep him wet my hands are wet so it's good fish the tags there we'll nice. release him Yeah. I'll upload that and then maybe in a few years someone will catch him, measure him and we'll know and they might catch him in the Brisbane River so then we'll know he's migrated, they do migrate out of the river systems into other river systems yeah. things like that So, um, but at minimum we'll at least know how much he's grown in how long that's mm. at least the minimum we find out, you know what I mean? So if anyone wants to do tagging they can just get it off the internet or something yeah? Yeah, so. yeah, so SCF Australia, search that, I think it's scfaustralia.com.au um, you can get a kit and six months membership for $75. And that includes, I think, 10 tags, and then the tags are a dollar each. You buy them in packs of 20 or 50 or something like that. That's a 50 pack we've got there. I'm gonna stick with the grubbies. So this is sort of like an experiment that, you know, are they taking those slim profiles or are they taking grubbies or yeah, both? Yeah, they a little slim bait fish profile or? So we'll see which one goes better. Grub, I've got the, um, 
got uh, red watermelon on right now. But uh, my my favourite in the pine is Midor Oil um, and Midnight Oil and Red Watermelon. With Midnight Oil probably being my favourite, but I already had this on, so mm. if I lose this, I probably will go to Midor Oil. Um, it sort of makes sense, doesn't it? It's the colour of the water here yeah. is Midor Oily. It is very Midor Oily, and, and that, that's the thing, what I've been told, and um, is you either you match the bottom or the colour of the water, whichever is the more dominant colour. Mm. Um, and around here, they're both very similar colour. So, um, got a bit of a muddy, greeny bottom with some like patches of algae in that, which are a bit green. And then the water is quite clear for the pine, but it's still got a bit of a green, brownish tinge. So, mm. that motor oil with the sort of greeny brown in it, perfect match. Perfect match. And then the midnight oil was just the same thing, which is a bit of fleck in it. Sparkle. It's a bit of sparkle. A bit of attractant. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's more, especially this, I find this uh, this morning time when there's the sun's just coming up, a little bit of sparkle on the motor oil definitely sets them off. Mm. And then as you get later in the day, sometimes the sparkles a bit much, you move back to the motor oil. Um, so in those early light hours or pre-dawn, you want that silhouette. They're mm. looking more for the silhouette than the actual colour. Yes, yeah. So the, the dark greens and that definitely help there. Well, my guess is with flathead too, they're more of a, a feely fish. Because I heard that they're not very good at seeing. No, they're not. They don't have good eyesight. But they do pick up. They've got, you know, uh, good contrast mm. sight. So they can see the contrast between dark and light very well. But otherwise, with, with Flathead, it's just um, silhouette and vibration, I think, more so than anything else. Yeah. Uh, and, just, and just bringing it past their, over their head. So you've got to get it coming over the top of them, not coming behind them, side as much. Side's all right, but if you've got them coming down, um, Look at the time to see it. Um, look at the time to see it and do a react to it before it gets to them, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, the flathead are not smartest, so. <laughs> They'll definitely hit a lure again, so if you feel a whack from a flatty, just try to pop your lure, like, and you missed a bite, just try to like, let your lure loose and then drop back to where it was. You know, maybe 50 times or maybe not quite that many, but more often the, the flathead will come and try and hit it again if, if, if it's still in sight, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, Fish? Yep. Already? Yep. Didn't even get me a, give me a chance to get us. Sorry, mate. Anywhere first. <laughs> Let's get that out of well, there. Get this just in case. Does sound like a good one. Mm. So with the flatties, I often have my drag up a little bit tighter than I normally fight them, just to set that hook. And then once I've hooked them, I'll pull back on that drag a little bit, just in case they've got it in their mouth and they stop them rubbing that uh, leader off on me. Mm -hmm. So that's Ooh, a flatty? Feel, no. Oh, lost it. Yeah, it was a flatty. Flatty. Good one. A bit off. Hit me off. That was one. Yeah, so there you go. All uh, roughed up, so you inhaled that. So a little tip whenever I'm re-rigging is I'll, when I put a new plastic on, I always put scent on because that just gets rid of your fingers, scents and you know, your body scents off it while tying it on and things like that. Um, but then I might not, if the fishing's good, I'll probably never put scent on again if, if the fishing's mm. good. But if we're not getting bites, then I'll, I'll reapply every every regular, you know what I mean? Every maybe 30 casts, if I remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a little something weird. A pull on the line. Oh, there. Is that a, that's a stick fish. You ever need me to catch some sticks? All right, grubby. I feel the grubby's going to connect now. That's nice up there. That's shallow there, eh? Yeah. So we want to come off the shallow, yeah. drop over the edge. Drop over the edge. We'll, we'll, get the, uh, we'll get the brim, even the flat, it's sitting right up there. From here we can see the edge of that, yeah. like into the water, it's so clear still. Well, the grubby's only had one real bite today. Your slim... Let me do a couple, I wouldn't say it's been hammered much more, so... It definitely seems to have got a couple more fish. And... 
You did drop that bloody earlier, so. I'm going to switch it over to one then. Yep. The sure. mullet. Midnight oil? No, I'm going to throw that little, mu little mullet looking yep. things. Since there are mullets jumping around. Yeah, probably. I was just saying, this is what we've got to do. You've got to change it over, change it up. Change it up. Alright, so I'm going to switch over to this mullet looking profile. Dark top, light bottom. Mm. Yep. It still swims. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's a good action. Sounds like a fish or? Like a fish. Looks like we're clear of mangroves at the moment, so no need to worry about that. Well, might not be a flatty actually. Could be, I don't know, I feel like flatty head today. So excited, my sunny just starting to fog up. <laughs> Let's follow this. Cruising down the edge of that bank. I'm using a one to two kilo setup so the rod does bend a lot and it is a bit of a Hollywood drag so we get the slatty in. Let's see up there, hopefully. There is a good bend in it, as you're saying. This is a good fish. Need me to do anything while we're. Not really. Uh, row up there. I just keep us out of the mangrove, which yep. we're doing, so yeah. that's alright. I mean. Mangrove wise, wise we're good oh. at the moment. Oh! Oh! You see something come up? Yeah, it's. I saw a tail. If it's a flatty, it is huge. Oh. You want me to swim, uh, paddle us up there or anything? Or just let uh, we'll see if it, if it doesn't keep coming this way, which it is, it's coming. So. See if we can see it. Good view of it. It's coming around. Run out of mangrove. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a good flatty. It's a huge flatty, and it's in the mouth. You little flipper. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Just get us past this mangrove. Yeah. He's got another hook in his mouth. <laughs> oh, is it your one? I don't your, know, it could your be. buddy. He's in the same rock, the same spot, sitting on the same bank. Right, well, we'll she's in the mouth, which is where you want a flatty hook. She's a big girl. Oh, she is. Yes, she is. Chunky. She might take off if she needs to use the net. Hey, little ripper! <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. That is a good one. Definitely be tagging this one. 62. So she's not the biggest. I've pulled a 63 out of here. So let's get a photo. She's fat though. That's a head and a half, isn't it? Nice. Yep, that's in there. She's healthy. This is why I fish from for these this size. That's that was good sports fun. That wasn't just dragging a flat in. That was There's not a, a good turn. A bit of sport involved getting these big ones in on light line, so definitely good fun. So yes. I'll let her go. She's ready. Go. Go on. Look at that. That's what we do it for. That's it. That is a good tip. You can see this bubble line and it's the current. Running through. Hopefully. See the eddy actually with those bubbles? Yeah, that bubble is sort of the, the wall of the, the eddy line, isn't it? So that means that the, the current's coming down this way. 
and there might be a bit of back current behind it so definitely a swirly area where a lot of fish would like to sit and last get up there oh that's it right along the oh it's a stick fish already i've got a massive stick fish yeah, it's a fish here's my first fish that was whilst pushing the boat out i think it's a fish no it's a stick fish oh, hey it's like a fish it sort of swam but no no it's not a stick fish it's a wire fish, wire fish. this one's actually some <laughs> that's a bit of wire so that's a first for me today wire oh well Still been a good morning. Yeah. Well, it's been a great morning. Okay. It's been a great morning. Yeah, You've caught some fish. You fish around, so. You've caught some, a nice bloody brim. Dropped a couple. Yeah. That's what it's about, though. That's right. Don't always get them, but we did. Or you did. And, um, <laughs> techniques is more to the point than the, the spot, so. More than welcome to come fish these spots, but if you looked at the techniques, you shouldn't need this spot. You should need to be able to just go to any spot, mm. find where the bank's dropping off or the water's being funneled through a, uh, a choke point, and just fish around there. And you you, you might not find them first place you look, but keep trying the different spots around there and kind of proving that they eventually come up. So yeah. a bit of a slow day, but there's definitely there. So I don't think there was any moon in the sky or anything special like that today. It was just mm. one of those didn't even look at the you know the fish predictions or anything like that it was just you know wind was down That's tide it. change let's give it, a, give it a hit so all right well, it's been awesome coming out with you yeah no, learning, thanks for bringing me out mate i've been had a blast learning uh how to fish how to soft plastic fishing lure type styles yeah uh i definitely need more practice i am good catching the sticks though <laughs> and why behind on that front today but <laughs> Again, like I was saying, it's not it's not the spot, it's techniques. If you do the techniques and you understand them, you can catch fish most places. So. Yeah. Well, and, and the main thing is enjoy it. Exactly. Don't, don't, don't expect to catch fish, hope to catch fish. Well, as I said, thanks for showing me the spot. Mate, no problem. Your Again, techniques. Thanks for bringing me out anytime. And, uh, I'm sure we'll get out again soon. 